Hey guys, it's Avondale, and welcome back to Let's Build a Game Show Game, where I work along with the other Noxcrew builders to build a game that you choose the direction of. You'll need to vote or provide input on each episode, so don't forget to leave your comment below so you help us make the game. Here's last week's poll. As you can see, it was another razor-thin margin, but you guys want us to build a factory game. In this episode, Gregan, Bano, and Niall will each pitch a factory game concept for your consideration. Make sure to consider each of their ideas, and then leave a comment with either Gregan, Bano, or Niall to choose which game concept you think is the best. Now that you're up to speed on the process, let's hear from the Nox Crew Builders. Alright, I'm here now with Gregan, and he's going to pitch his game idea. Hello, um... Well, the game is essentially a go-collect-the-materials kind of game, but with a cool mechanic where everyone's going to do some cool command block stuff. We've got a conveyor belt, where on it, each of these kind of sp screenshots of a cannon's production will, will have a little machine that makes each section. So at the start, you have to go and collect some cobblestone to go and uh, make the feet for the cannon, and then the machine will all construct it with some cool particle effects and all that kind of thing. Uh, then they'll have to go off and find some logs to make the, the cross beam between the feet. Um, these will all be in different rooms within the factory and it will all be kind of given to them with instructions on the machine. So it will be fairly simple to find. But there will be a little puzzle at the end to go and try and get the materials for it. Then once they've made the log that goes across, they then have to collect the quartz to make the cannon. And then when they make the cannon, they then fire the machine at the other teams um, trying to produce the cannon on and then they win. So it, sh it should last kind of eight or so minutes, depending on how good they are at the puzzles. But yeah, we we know what we're like with puzzles. They could they could last forever, or they could uh, last a little short while. So yeah, that's the that's the game. Yeah. So imagine this line here as being the conveyor belt, and so you're gonna have uh, the first machine is gonna make these feet, right? So the feet are gonna set down on the conveyor belt once you put the materials into the machine. And then yeah. the conveyor belt is going to move these things along over here to the next stage. It's going to stop. Then you have to solve that puzzle uh, that put the wood in that makes the cross beam. Once that puzzle is solved, the conveyor will move again, etc. So the end result then, like you mentioned, is you're going to blow up the other team's machine, uh, yeah. rendering them unable to finish their puzzle. And uh, that would be they how could you win the game. Yeah, they could almost be like a last little section where you have to load it up. And that fires at the other teams. Yeah, machine. and depending on like if we were to choose this idea, depending on the amount of time it took to get to this stage, it would be whether or not we would add the last stage. Uh, yeah. What else is there to think about? You know, so we have different. There's different types of puzzles that you could do to give yourself materials. Uh, they could just be a straight up like collection thing where you have to solve the puzzle of how to get there in the first place. Or it could be there's a different type of machine that's jammed up and you need to find, you know, push a certain combination of buttons or levers to unjam it. Uh, anything yeah. like that is really possible. Maybe one of the machines doesn't have power, so you have to try to find a way to resupply the power to it. Yeah, uh, the log thing, you could almost have like a log chopping room where they've grown some trees for you. You have to go in there and chop them down. Yeah, sort of thing. absolutely. Yeah. Uh... So yeah, that's the uh, the cannon machine idea that Gregan had. Uh, okay, now let's land down here, Gregan. Before we go, uh, I want you to tell the viewers uh, why they should pick you instead of those other two crummy people that they've heard, that they're gonna hear from. Well, one, this is gonna be really cool videos because there's gonna be lots of commands and uh, cool little tricks you're gonna show them how to do. Uh, two, it's got conveyor belts, instant win, uh, and three you make a cannon and blow the other team up. What, what other game would you want to choose over that? Alright. <laughs> so, thanks a lot to Gregan. Yeah. Please pick me. Say bye. Bye! Alright, I'm here now with Bano and he's going to explain his game idea. Hello. Yeah. Uh, my game idea is uh, based around the idea well, that you're in a huge lava pit in the game show. And each teams on the each side of the pit are trying to 
take the uh, go their way up this contraption of different puzzles and they win by getting to the top first and seeing the other team die basically um so the lava is gonna fill up the pit behind you yeah. as you're running and so you're racing to escape the lava uh, and yeah. you're trying to solve the puzzles fast enough that you don't die this entire model here is a bit of an older design. Uh, I made it, then I changed it around a bit, or we changed it around. So, but I'll go through it anyway, and I can show you what the, the puzzles and things are. So, right, um, you start off by starting on a floor, and on each floor there's going to be a simpler puzzle, sometimes a bit more complicated. Um, the glass here is only because you can't... Uh, you, before you couldn't jump, but you can, uh, I, we changed it around to include parkouring a bit more. So right, right now you don't even have to do this puzzle, you just have to jump over. But otherwise, in my original design, you have to stand there, there, and there. And you just walk over. Great. And when doing this, you could continue to the next door, and you'd keep on hurrying from the lavas all this time. Yeah, and we here. would have had some sort of elevator or something mm. to get them up. Uh, so yeah, this was just the original idea for this uh, and didn't involve jumping at all. Like we were going to remove their jump ability, but um, I kind of it seemed to be more puzzle based, but now yeah. it's more bit skill based. Yeah, well, it's it's hopefully going to have elements of skill to go along with the puzzle solving. Mm. So, and for example, this one here. You um, you both uh, are the players stand here, and then you place all well, that the third member stands there, and then from here you try the other the members try not to try step out. There's many, there's gonna be many of these different puzzles, uh, quite simple ones in the idea, but they can be hard to execute, like uh, to pre to do them, because uh, you also the lava is, is just slowly rising, or actually quite fast, so. If you're too slow and all your team members die, you're out of the game. Right. But you can also see your team members on the other side die, which is fantastic. Yeah. So let, let's imagine, you know, we're inside a pit right now that's filling up with lava. We have a team on either side. To avoid having to remove their uh, jump ability, but still be able to um, basically make them push things to allow their progress up. Uh, you just do things like this if we, you know we'd have a piston under there that would push those up that you'd have to hit you could get to something like this where the pistons would push out and that would allow you to jump across uh, we would have different puzzles like this where uh, you're pushing the blocks up this was whoops supposed to be down so you'd have to push the block up and then your teammate would go up to the next one and push that one up and that would allow you to get up to the next side the quirky thing about this game is that, uh, you know, the lava is rising and because players can die, we need to design puzzles that don't need all of your team members to do. Uh, so you'll see this one right here, Bano was just able to run back and forth and do the puzzle himself. And even though it took longer, uh, it was still doable with one person. And that's important because we want the teams to uh, finish the race regardless. You know, it's the race is to get out of this gigantic pit. And... Um, let's say one person from one of the teams gets out but the other two die and he gets out the fastest but then uh the other team manages to get all three players out afterwards uh that might be a win condition that we would need to discuss in a future episode but most likely that would mean that even though the one person got out the fastest uh the team who got more members out should probably still win the game so uh, yeah, you guys uh, should get the concept now that Bano presented to you. It's a, uh, you know, the goal is to escape the pit, and it's solving puzzles that allow you to parkour your way out. Run or die lava pits. <laughs> That's right. So it does sort of um, mix together a couple of the styles, but it will be uh, mainly a puzzle game based around you know solving the jumps the jumps won't be the hardest thing about it mm. the hardest the thing about it will be it. just making sure you can solve the puzzles oh good we have a guest star okay so real quick bano join me down here uh, ignore zerby um yeah. and uh last thing i want you to do is uh tell the audience why they should pick your idea instead of any of the other guys crummy ideas i want you to trash talk the other guys because my idea is the greatest this planet, this side of the planet has ever seen, and there is total 
pile of crap. I haven't not even seen them, but I know they're they're Shmoo! <laughs> okay. I can see from here it's like stinking. Like I can see the marks. Like brown. Yeah. Alright, so uh that was Bano. Say bye. Bye. Alright, we're here with Niall now and he's gonna give us his game idea, so why don't you walk us through it? Hey guys, good to see you all again. Okay, so my game idea revolves around the fact that two of the team members have gotten trapped somewhere within the bowels of the gigantic machine, and the third person's job is to kind of help them navigate the machine so they can figure out how to get out. So, with this idea, what happens is there'll be these however long, however wide segments that are going to rotate. And they're going to rotate whenever one of the two team members that are trapped presses a button down in a hidden control room. Now, when they're pressing these buttons, they're not going to be able to see this machine. It's just going to be down here off to the side. We didn't build it because, you know, it's irrelevant for the time being. Right, While the so, third person... Okay, so you're planning on splitting up the team members. Uh, so there's two down here in this control room at the start, and the third guy is mm -hmm. up there in the main uh, area, like the production line of the machine. So this room yes. that we didn't build down here uh, will have buttons that will rotate the different uh, segments in the puzzle uh, back and forth, or in just one direction. It could be either. And, uh, yeah, it's probably gonna, just clockwise. Yeah, and it's going to be the guy up where Niall is. It's going to be his job to tell the guys down in this room which buttons are doing what and how many times they need to rotate them. And once they have them rotated in the proper order, uh, this door will open, allowing them to access the inner guts of the machine. Yeah, so once they've gone into the machine, they can't rotate it, so they've got to make sure they get it right. If they have to, you know, if they've mucked up or something and they have to start over, they've got to do it from scratch. So, once they're in the machine, they'll be looking for these buttons, these coloured areas. They're going to just kind of stand out a little bit more with, and there's going to be buttons with diamond blocks. Every time they press one of these, some part of the machine is going to activate. So back here up on the viewing platform, maybe a, uh, what do we call this? Conveyor belt? Conveyor belt. It's... 12.38 a.m. <laughs> Not for you. Right. Yeah, so when they push yep. that purple button there, that would cause this purple conveyor belt to raise up like this. So let's do it with a clone command in 1.8. And that'll allow the guy who's uh, sitting up here to be able to access the next part of the machine. Now, the ultimate goal of the machine is going to be for... Uh, well, I should say the ultimate goal of the puzzle is going to be for the guy up here to uh, push the button or pull the lever that starts this machine up up here and he's blocked off by these various obstacles up here and that's what the other two, the, uh, two people are inside the guts of the machine to fix. So when they push these different colored buttons it's going to activate the different parts of the machine. So we have this blade here, uh, you know it's a pretty typical uh, cartoony factory thing. It'll go up and down on slime blocks uh, when we're in 1.8. And, we'll make it look better. Yeah, and they won't be able to get by here, and we'll block off this jump on the side. You know, you could jump around there if you weren't recording and lagging like I am. Uh, or if you just didn't stink at parkour. But yeah, once this blade starts going up and down, the guy up here will be able to time it and run through and get to the other side. And then there will be at least one more button uh, that they'll have to push to let him buy another obstacle. And then he'll actually uh, yeah. pull the thing. And actually, now that I think of it, there's probably going to be, like, it might be, like, three pressure plates that uh, trigger the end of the game. Uh, so if you think about co-op puzzle maps, how they require one player to stand on each pressure pad for the end gates to work. Um, yeah, we'll so, like, the top of like the... That. Yeah, so Top of the viewing platforms, yeah, that we might open up a gate so they can actually escape. Right, and what I, was... I don't really want to be turning the machine on when they're still in there. <laughs> yeah, what I was just <laughs> thinking though was like, the guy, we're planning on having him come out this segment, I think, here, probably sideways. And so if yeah, we sure. make them come over here and put their two pressure pads here and then have it separated by a thing of glass, and then the third guy, his pressure pad is right here. They can all access the same sort of general area that's like the main computer control for the machine or something. And then when the three of them step on it, that'll end the timer and cue the music and 
so on. Yeah, we can probably have the two teams do it simultaneously as well. There's no reason why we couldn't. Uh, there's a couple reasons why we couldn't, but we will see uh, when we get down. We'll probably figure that out in testing, actually. Uh, yeah. It shouldn't be too bad stress-wise on the game to run the stuff that both sides would need at the same time, but the thing that I'm personally worried about is making sure that the cameras are able to capture both teams at the same time. Uh, yeah. During the R&D phase, we always think about cameras, like, like every single thing, so... Yeah, because it's very important that our viewers can see the stuff that we're making properly or it's not going to be fun to watch. And the toughest thing about doing two of these at the same time will be guaranteeing that we can show the progress of both teams at the same time. And I think to do that, we would probably mirror the game onto that side for the other team and then try to park a camera right here. But I think you guys can see that angle is just a little sketchy, particularly the stuff down there is sort of hard yeah. to see to uh, sort of make sure that you include it all in here. It puts that stuff at a weird perspective. Uh, also, it is worth noting, we're probably going to make this bigger. Like, it's not going to be 3x3, three three. it's probably going to be bigger than that, so... Yeah, it probably be wouldn't be difficult. any bigger than 5x5, five five, but... Uh, yeah, that'll be the maximum. 4x4 four four might be a good number. We don't want the dra game to drag out too long in between the rotating of the segments and the parkour in the middle and this parkour here. Uh, you know, we're probably, with a 4x4, four four, I'm guessing it'd be right around 7 or 8 minutes, which is the best sort of length for a game show game. Hmm. Yep, yeah. so yeah, that's Niall's idea. Uh, any any last words you want to pump up the crowd, get them to vote for you? Um, no, because I know that everyone else is probably going to say something, you know, like pandering, like they'll tell them that they're going to take their top off and ex expose their manly chest, and I'm above that, because I know that your audience is an intellectual... Okay, see, now I'm just doing it already. If I'm not... Uh, no. Well, you tried, and I'm pretty sure you had most of them uh, turned off at manly hairy chests, so... Uh, that's, <laughs> yep. that's too bad. Uh, okay, uh, so... Uh, I'm winning the niche audience. <laughs> there you go. Alright, thanks a lot, Niall. Bye. Now you've seen game concepts from Gregan, Bano, and Niall. Leave Gregan as your comment if you'd like us to use the cannon building game. Leave Bano as your comment if you'd like us to use the Escape from the Lava Pit game. Leave Niall as your comment if you'd like to see us use the Rotating Pipe game. Votes will be counted three days from the release of this video. Stay tuned until next time when we'll reveal the results of the poll from this episode, and then tell you how you can contribute directly to this project, and even get your name in the credits of the game. I've been Avondale, thanks for watching.